I just had to trust it. How often have you heard a professional say that when faced with a pressure shot on the final hole of a tournament? But what does trust in it mean? Let's get it on. Trust in yourself and trust in your swing means doing it without thinking. You're using what's called your subconscious mind. That's the part of your brain that's keeping your heart beating and digesting your food. You're thinking, you're not thinking about it. You're thinking about other things while your subconscious mind is doing things automatically. The way to trust your golf shots and trust your golf swing is to use this part of your mind. Think of it this way. Think of a friend ask you to, to just throw them something, throw them a ball. You don't pick up the ball and think, right, let me put my fingers around the ball, get my thumb on the outside, take my hand back, and then throw them the ball. You don't think of it like that. You grab the ball and you simply throw it to them. It's that part of your mind that you're going to use to trust yourself when hitting your golf shots. When you're truly trusting it, you've only got the image of your intended target and your intended line, and you're just sending it to the target. And that is what trusting it is. Now, here's the thing. It's easy for me to sit here and say, but just like any other skill and many of the other technical skills in golf, it does take practice. Now, I've said this in lots of my content before. Golf is more than just the mind. Of course it is. We know the mind plays an important part in playing your best golf, but it's more than just your mind. Of course, there's times to work on swing analysis, swing changes, technical changes, usually with the eye of a PGA professional providing that analysis. If you're doing that self-analysis on the course, though, usually you're asking for trouble. Because if you're making those technical stiff swings, you are losing sight of your target and you're losing your natural rhythm that you have when you're playing your best golf. Let's think of that rhythm another way. Let's say you were going for a nice leisurely stroll with family or friends and you were on a nice country path, but you had some white trainers or sneakers on and there was a muddy puddle. Let's say this puddle's around three feet wide. What would you do? You'd look at the puddle, you wouldn't really break, st break stride and you'd hop over it. Now let's take that same three feet puddle or a three feet gap, not a puddle. Let's take a three feet gap and put a three feet gap 10 stories in the air. All of a sudden, you probably get a little bit technical. You tense up. You wouldn't just simply stroll and hop over it. You'd wait, you'd hesitate. And it wouldn't look as good and it wouldn't be as fluid as when you simply didn't think about it and hopped over the three feet gap. Trust in it, the golf swing is very much the same. But here's the challenge. If you're anything like me, it's going to take you a little bit of practice to get out of this thought process. The thought process of, you know, I really need to pay attention and, and really think about everything because golf is hard. I need to think about this. Think carefully. Think analytically. Now, that is probably true in practice and other situations, but not when executing the shot. It's about trusting it and letting it go. And here's the thing, guys. There's an imperfection in your swing, in all of our swings at any given time, barring maybe Tiger in 2000, right? But usually, usually there's an imperfection in our swing at any one time. So thinking technically and tensing up is not likely to improve our score on that day. Trusting it and sending the ball to our target is more likely to help us maximize the score that day. So our intention, what you should mark yourself on, is whether you trust every single shot. Because you can't fairly assess your golf game if you swung the club with doubt. How do you know where your golf game is if you're swinging with doubt? Make a little mark on the scorecard when you trusted the shot and hopefully you're getting as more and more marks, trust marks as time goes on. And if you're faced with a situation, let's say it's a tight drive, water's on the left, out of bounds on the right, and you grab your driver and all of a sudden you just can't bring yourself to trust it. There's no ego here. This is about, this is about, it's a game with the score, right? It's about getting the lowest score possible. So let's say it's your four iron, you grab your four iron, you know you can trust it, you swing with trust, send it to your intended target. That makes a lot more sense because it is a game with the score. It's not about ego. It's about what is the best score that you can execute with trust on any given day for you. Now, here's the thing. Trust takes practice. It is like any other skill. But practice doing it before you get to the first tee. Have the intention to trust that first tee shot because if you're not trusting it from the moment you start, you pull on that thread of doubt, things can unravel very, very quickly during your round of golf. I know that maybe you've experienced this. Your intention should be to trust your swing from the start, enjoy yourself, stick to your routine, and implement your plan. Will this level of trust in every shot guarantee great golf? Of course not. But as with anything I teach, anything I share, I'm about maximizing the odds 
of shooting the lowest score possible with the swing you have that day. Give it a try. Trust yourself on every shot and watch what happens to your scores. I'll see you very soon. If you like the idea of trusting yourself, improving your golf mental game, please like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel. And there's some links down below where you can join our free mental game coaching portal where there's 